the top of this dashboard are your quick actions. We've got buttons to create new assignments over here, a list of tasks in the middle, and to the right, a brand new single student assignment view. Now this is still in development, but will be available within May 2021. The assignment reporting is split into three areas, my assignments, school library, and HOD or manager view. Let's start with my assignments. To the left, we have some simple categories to make finding your assignments easy. As default, you'll see all your upcoming deadlines, but you can simply click to view scheduled or past deadlines like this. Let's go back to upcoming. We can see basic details about the assignment here, like who it's set for, the deadline, any co markers and so on. Changes can be made using the three dots to the right or you can hover over certain information and change it within the table. For example, if you want to add more students to your assignment, just click here, or to extend the deadline, just hover over the date and click the pen icon. The calendar view is really helpful for keeping organized or to quickly check what needs to be handed in before your next class. Hovering over an assignment on the calendar will tell you more about it, like who it's set for and also how many students still need to submit it. I can easily see when the deadline is, even if it's in a week into the future, just by looking to the right here as well. And if I've got a class about to arrive, I can even use the group filter to select a class and remind myself when their next homework is due. Let's have a look at our assignments that are now in the past. Again, the group filter comes in really handy here as we can focus in on just one class. Note that when I chose it, it does include all assignments I've set for any students within that class. So here, for example, I have an assignment that I set for just a couple of students in the class. Uh, this was actually an intervention group, as well as the assignments which have been set for the whole group. To build a progress mark book, we first need to decide which assignments we want to include. Now to do this, we just tick the box next to each one. And here I've selected my four assignments for this PE class. Once you start selecting assignments, you'll see you're now invited to create the progress mark book and we can just click here to build it. Across the top of the mark book, you've got some high level stats. So I can see that ethical issues in sport had the highest average mark, whereas how is fitness measured had the lowest. Below, I have each assignment shown as a single column with the list of students down the left hand side. I can sort by any column. So for example, I can see which students averaged the highest mark across all these four assignments. I can also click on any assignment name to go to the full mark book if I want to remind myself of how they did in each question. Additional data can be added using the columns button. So I might want to add pupil premium status beside each student's name if I want to look for correlations. The export allows me to get all of this data straight into Excel, where I might combine it with other assessment data or use it as evidence for teacher assessed grades. The highlight feature is especially useful if you're keen to see at a glance any mark below a certain level. It can also visually highlight patterns in the results, such as a student who's consistently scoring below a certain expected mark. Finally, the filter is a great tool if you want to zone in on specific students within the group. I have an intervention group within this class, so I can simply pick that from the list it will remove all the other students and leave me just with those ones. This can come in handy, especially if you're a head of department who likes to set assignments for a whole year group, but then wants to zone in on a particular class for the progress mark book.